Carrington, the great magical, mystical, surrealist artist, writer, weaver of dreams. She had Max Ernst as a lover and she was amused to him, but a creative, fiery force in her own right. She's also a mentor to Alejandro Jodorowsky, you know, the great alchemical psycho magician and filmmaker of Holy Mountain fame. And he had this great project of trying to restore the Tarot Marseille. And it's actually Leonora who initiated him into the mysteries and taught him the Tarot. She is a very magical woman. And our Wistic Wednesdays this week is gonna be dedicated to her. So, Leonora Carrington. Well, if she was still with us on this earthly realm, I think she would be 104 years old. So she lived to a ripe old crony age. And yeah, a birthday. So, an Aries, like me. Fiery little ram. And also, similarly to me, she's from the northwest of England, from Lancashire. But this is where the similarities stop because she's actually from a very wealthy family. Of, of course, from the north of England, factory owners in the textile industry. Um, and she grew up in this big old manor, Crookie Hall, I think it's called. Um, and so, yeah, in a lot of her writing, there are these themes of kind of rich girl horses, the classic debutante tale, what else, being in the nursery, horses everywhere. But actually, she didn't really take too much to this lifestyle and... They sent her off to like some boarding school and she got expelled because she isn't very good at like being in the high society. Um, so yeah, from Lancashire, but very wealthy. But you can sometimes hear it in her accent when she speaks that she's got this Northwestern tone. And I quite like to think like, okay, from radically different ends of the social spectrum, but we grew up looking at the same landscapes and the same I mean, dreary weather and colours. So she's got a special place in my heart. Now, I don't want to go in too much of a biography because there's lots of great podcasts and um, documentaries to watch. For example, there's a Witch Wave episode with Susan Aberoth, I think her name is, and, you know, a few BBC ones. But at the same time, I mean, I was l reading and watching them all again yesterday. And I feel over time there's been kind of, she's been glossed over this politics of respectability. And a lot of these documentaries kind of hide the fact that, I mean, I was going to say she was fucking mental. I mean, she was, but in her youth, she did spend time in a mental asylum. And I think she got electroshock therapy. Um, and her nanny actually helped her escape. And then she fled to Mexico. So she'll be a bit more careful with her language. Let's say she did not shy away from wearing her surrealism on her sleeve. You know, she did not adhere to the normative ways of society. And for that reason, I really enjoyed revisiting this um, autobiography or one of his autobiographies from Jodorowsky. Yes, he does quite often have this messiah complex, but it really like brings out the weirdness and surreal nature of Leonora's life. So here's one quote from when he, I think he was in his 30s, so really young time when he was training to be a mime. Um, he went to visit her in Mexico City under the instruction of his Zen, Japanese Zen master. And so he, Yodorowsky shares all these kinds of tales of like, Leonora was having dinner with some members of high society who were most outraged when they noticed she'd taken off her shoes and covered her feet in mustard. There's also another tale of when some other surrealist artist, I want to say his name, Louis Brunel? I don't know, I'll find out. Anyway, he was completely enamoured by Leonora and without even waiting for a response, said that he wanted her to be his mistress and he gave her the key to his little sex nest. And so Leonora went there and it was a real shady affair, like this seedy little studio. So Leonora had the wonderful idea of decorating it with her own period blood in her hands. Good old Leonora. 
Um, and so there's this quote from Jodorowsky that I want to share that I came across last night, which I think just really encapsulates the mystery and the magic of this woman. So it says, I wish I could do Jodorowsky's voice, but I'm not going to even try. What I had felt for her had nothing to do with sexual or romantic desire. My soul wanted to unite itself with hers. My rational consciousness wanted to drown in the limitless, in her limitless spirit. What I truly desired was to taste the soma of holy madness. Wow, that's pretty powerful. And you can definitely tell that she's a strong, magnetic character. Now, as I said, I'm going to stop a bit with a biography now because loads of people have talked about it. And also, she herself, I think she, when people, you know, like, for example, art historians and interviewers came to see her, apparently she didn't like to talk too much about her personal life because she said, as a woman, as a female artist, writer, you know, you should be talking about her works, not her personal life. So with that in mind, let's continue. I'm about to introduce you the Wand of the Week. Woo! Wistic Wands Days. Oh, let me add, I've gone like, it's nearly two weeks without a cigarette. So if I seem a little crazier than usual, then this is partly why, but also I guess this is just my natural self. Old crazy Lancashire Aries lady coming out of the shadows. Beep, beep. 